Side joke for those who know. <laughs> hey everybody, this is uh, Mark Fusco with Leet Wine TV here for another episode of the show. And uh, again, we're going to do about five. We're about we're doing five of these wines uh, tonight. Actually, early in the morning, um, 1:30 in the morning ish in the morning. Um, so we're going to hit some wines in the mouth, and we're going to get this pumped out. All right, enough of the little references for those who know. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, Hey, 1.30 in the morning and I'm doing my wine reviews for you on a Saturday night. Who else does this stuff? Nobody. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get right into this. Um, this wine I bought this year. Hey, I got some wines from this year, by the way, uh, in this set. Uh, I went over to Central Market to buy um, the uh, Sacre Bleu. And uh, while I was there, of course, I had to buy other wines. I mean, I just couldn't buy just those two. I had to, like, kind of look. It's like being in the bookstore and you go, ooh, or candy store. And go, ooh, I want that. So um, I ran to the rep for this wine. Um, this is the uh, Hoya de Cadenas uh, <coughs> Winery. Uh, get a little close up of the label there. Uh, this is a Spanish wine, and it's from the uh, the appellation is Utiel Requena, and uh, it's a eastern central part of Spain. This is the 2009 Blanco. Uh, it retails for $8.78 at Central Market. Uh, it's a combination of Sauvignon Blanc, Chardonnay, and Maccabio. Uh, I, I'm assuming I'm pronouncing the name of that last varietal correctly. Uh, I don't think it's Masab, Masabio or Maccabeo. Maybe it's Maccabeo. That's probably what it is. Maccabeo. I bet you that's how it's pronounced. Um, <clears throat> so it's a combination of those. I don't know the percentages of that, um, but uh, they are part of the uh, Vicente Gandia uh, group of wines or winery or, or corporation company. Um, so this is uh, this particular label for them. And uh, like I said, the DO is uh, Utio Requena. And um, it's actually known for, not these varietals, but for a varietal that I, I must not have paid attention to when I was doing all this stuff, the Bobal grape varietal. I, I, don't, I don't really know too much about it. Um, I'm going to assume it's kind of one of those just you know, local wine varieties that, you know, the rest of the world doesn't really worry about, but uh, we're going to go and try it out and uh, see how it is. I mean, you should be able to do it in the air, right? Uh, first of all, let's take a look at the color. Uh, we're going to eventually, uh, I need to, I got a little bit of cork in there. Um, we're going to eventually um, get my tasting grid on uh, paper and then we'll go through that a little bit more I don't know, scientifically but a little more organized uh, and again that's really for me to get prepped for the um, certified sommelier test which I plan to take sometime next year I won't be ready this year for it yet all right so um, look at the color color is pretty decent um, uh, the legs the legs really don't mean anything just so you know um, but it does kind of give you the you know, how vis viscous the wine is and there's a bit of viscosity. It's hard to tell. You probably can't see it, but there's a bit of viscosity to it. Um, but other than that, it's just it's it's it doesn't it doesn't indicate quality. If you thought it did, you are mistaken, and someone's been blowing uh, smoke somewhere. All right. All right. So um, the my. First thought was apples. Um, I get a bit of citrus, more like that fleshy fruit citrus, like a like a, a, a mandarin orange or a tangerine, not tangerine, a mandarin orange type of thing. Uh, nectarine, not nectarine, mandarin orange. Yes, <laughs> I keep thinking of something else. No, uh, more of that type of fleshy fruit. Um, and a little bit of, of, of your typical 
lemony citrus. So the apple was that first, it's not as prevalent now, it's more that, tan, not tangerine, more that orangey, uh, mandarin orange type of thing. Yeah, pretty much like that. Uh, let's see how it tastes. It's pleasant, but nothing kind of, nothing really comes out at me, you know? Um, I never started the timer on it. Okay, well, I know about how long I've been going on right now since I looked at the time. I mean, I get the, uh, <clears throat> I get that lemony citrus type of thing. Um, not much acid on it. It's actually kind of, I don't want to use the word flat on acid, but it's, I don't get very, I don't, the, the nothing, it's nothing cutting through anything. Um, it, I, I'm not blown away by it. I don't really think it's spectacular it's easy drinking and if it was chilled it'd probably be refreshing um, I think a lot of people would like it because it's easy to drink especially if it was chilled if it was like especially our Americans chill their wine uh, you know at like 40 degrees 50 degrees um, it would be a probably a really nice refreshing hot summer day wine for me I could probably down a bottle with no problem if it was chilled and all that. But I, I, I wouldn't necessarily go, this is awesome wine. I don't really get a flavor profile. Um, it, it just could be, you know, it's late night. I've, I've wor I worked a long day at the, at the day job. You know, I, I work in restaurants. So, you know, you know how that, you know, for those of you that are in the industry, you know how that can be. Um, it took me a couple hours to get home and, and, settle down and had something to eat and all that. I'm not trying to make excuses, but uh, I'm, I'm trying to say that this is the first wine review of, of the five that I'm going to do today. So I should be the freshest with this, but I, I don't really, I don't know, I don't get much from it. It's tasty, but it's not memorable. I'm not saying every wine needs to absolutely blow me away, but I, I don't think there's anything <clears throat> that's compelling to make me buy it, no matter what the price was, even if it was three ninety nine. Um, <clears throat> there's nothing there to to say I've got to buy it. Oh, hey, they got the percentages on here: forty percent Sauvignon Blanc, forty Chardonnay, and twenty uh, Macabio. Or Masabio, Macabio, Macabio. I don't know. Macabeo. Yeah, that's how society pronounces it. Macabeo. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it that you have to go out and buy it. But if I was going to rate it as a wine, um, sorry to the gentleman I met, but I'm not impressed with it. Um, I, yeah. 82. Uh, it's not horrible. It's not the worst I've ever had. Um, it doesn't. It's not going to get the prices right. Bum, 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 bum. It's not going to get the little horn thing. You know that that's reserved for the really bad wines. Um, but I wouldn't necessarily say you've got to get this wine. If you found it and you wanted something that's easy to drink and kind of tasty, but not going to blow you away, go ahead buy it. But um, there's I think there's a lot of other wines out there that are better. Uh, hey, in success, I didn't get the cork in my mouth. All right, um, <clears throat> that's going to do it for today's show. <clears throat> I'm sorry. That's going to do it for today's show. Um, I don't have my stickers with me, but uh, 
Make sure uh, if you uh, want to get some stickers, uh, shoot me an email. Actually, we're supposed to come up with some like little contest way for you to win them. So um, give me some ideas. Uh, maybe I'll post something on Twitter in, in another, another few days to uh, you know be first one to retweet this. We'll get a, a thing of stickers. Do some guerrilla marketing. You know, I don't know. There's some other podcasts out there that tell you to put on the toll booth. So I'm not telling you to do that. But you can use it on other things. Oh, by the way, I just went to a wine tasting. Uh, I, I tweeted about it a little bit. I tweeted the um, the the little tasting note sheet. Really, all I did is put a, a check or an X or a straight line. That was just you know quick, quick and dirty. I wasn't getting too into it. Um, but uh, the only thing I had, the only complaint I had was that all the they had wine barrels as their tables. Um, only one barrel of the ten decided to put the trash can, which was supposed to be their spit bucket, on the barrel. You know, there's 20 wines that you're tasting. Um, and even before I went through this little stuff uh, for a year, uh, I'm not going to sit there and drink 20 wines. Now, they were using little shot glass, plastic shot glasses, which that was the other thing I was like, I, I guess maybe I haven't gotten a lot of these tastings, um, but I guess I was expecting a wine glass. <clears throat> but I, if I remember right, some of these wine tastings I've gone to, you bought the wine glass. But it's okay. I can bring a wine glass. I mean, I got plenty at the house. Um, but like the little shot glass uh, of wine, you're getting an ounce. Well, if you drink all 20 of them, you're, you're having 20 ounces of wine. And that's almost a bottle. And we went through that in an hour. So drinking a bottle of wine in an hour is not a good idea. Um, so there should really be encouraging people spitting into the bucket. Yes, there was some little food there, but it was, you know, it wasn't that much to slow down the absorption of the alcohol. Um, I will go again, uh, but I will bring my bucket. Oh, hey, it allows me to, oh, who's 1337 wine? On the positive side, I got to meet, uh, venuously speaking, uh, Ceci, and uh, so a fellow wine blogger in San Antonio. So it was awesome to meet her and uh, some of her family. So um, looking forward to uh, meeting other San Antonio wine celebrities. Uh, or pe well-known people in wine here. And uh, that's going to do it for now. Uh, we will see everybody again next time.